I didn't know um, what I was going to write here. I was going to do a film in Paris. I was looking forward to it. I thought of a wonderful title, Midnight in Paris, because it suggested enormous amount of romance. But I didn't know what was going to happen at Midnight in Paris. There were no films that I was thinking of. I just wanted Paris to look very beautiful. And, and the requirement for all my films that I always have with all the cinematographers is uh, that the photography is, has to be very, very warm. All the exposures have to be on the brown, red, and yellow side. He gave me a lot of freedom to try different things and, you know, wasn't so exacting on getting, you know, every word precise. And so I felt very comfortable trying different things. And, um, yeah, and then I had heard kind of going in, oh, you know, Woody doesn't give a lot of direction. or uh, And even when I first met Woody um, in Paris when he asked how my flight was, and I said, fine. And he said, well, this will be the last you hear from me. And the fact that Owen was willing to play it was a great gift to me and, uh, and brought a real dimension to the film that it would not have had and would have sorely missed if he had not consented to do it. I experienced something very, you know, similar to Owen. Uh, a lot of freedom, uh, a lot of room to play and grow. Uh, but also, you know, if I needed help, <laughs> I could turn to Woody and, and um, ask for, for guidance. I had seen Rachel in a film with Owen years ago, and uh, I thought she was sensational. I thought she was beautiful and sexy and funny and a wonderful actress, and I, I wanted to work with her. I wanted to think of some way that I could use her to work with her, and the opportunity came up. Now, the truth of the matter is, I, I didn't like the fact that they had worked together in a picture before. That was a negative for me. I figured, oh, people will think it's Rachel and Owen again, and, and, but I felt nothing I could do about it. They're both great, and I want them both, and Rachel, I just thought could come in and nail this part. I was excited about this kind of um, deliciously um, direct character. And it was great, you know, I sort of try to pull back on her a little bit and, and Owen <laughs> turned to me and say, it's so much funnier when you're mean. <laughs> the way that we do sort of, you know, a three or four page scene and you do it in one take is an exciting way to work as an actor rather than breaking everything up and, you know, moving in for, you know, all this coverage. So um, you kind of had more, you know, excitement doing the scene. There were notes that, uh, that I got that I uh, genuinely, and I'm not just saying it because he's here, but uh, but that were uh, that I will use in everything that I do from now on, really. And uh, it was uh, fascinating. It was absolutely fascinating to watch someone work whose uh, work has such a distinctive and unique flavour, and to be able to see, get a little hint of what gives it that unique and distinct flavour. I remember one of the the notes what he had said was, you know kind of encouraged me to go a bit further with it. He said, I want him to know that he's in the presence of a genius, but a madman. And so I could go further with the, the kind of mission accomplished. It was easy for me to write about all these people because I was writing about them in a satirical way. So to write dialogue for Picasso or Hemingway uh, or Scott Fitzgerald or Zelda Fitzgerald, was simple because I wasn't trying to make them uh, meaningful and deep and profound characters, but I was trying to make them just amusing and entertaining. I, I've always been lucky with casting. You know, the trick in casting is to hire great people and let them do what they do. Don't interfere with them too much. And then when they're great, take credit for it at the end. <laughs> And I've done this for many years, and it works like a charm. Yeah.